Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to One Shabbat. Thank you all for signing up and coming along. I hope you're going to have a wonderful Shabbat. We have a wonderful Kabbalah service this evening for you, which will uh, take around about 45 minutes. So should finish in time for the earliest in the UK who are candle lighting uh, just after seven o'clock. <clears throat> for the rest of us, uh, it's a little bit later, so a little bit more relaxed. Um, but we have contributions from lots of people. We have contributions from Danny Bergson, um, and uh, we have contributions from around the world as well. And we'll be having more contributions tomorrow night in Havdala. So if you enjoyed this evening, it's the same link for tomorrow night for Havdala. I'm Ed Horwich. I'm Chief Executive of Jewish Small Communities Network. Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome you all, and you will not be surprised that we will open this evening with uh, remembering Her Majesty the Queen. Our theme of, of Neighbours and Strangers is taken from the Cedra this week, Ki Te Se. Um, if I want to paraphrase it, you could say, if you see someone having problems, don't ignore it, stop and help them. And we know that her faith was very important to the Queen. And so I think the following story about her reflects both her face, faith and the mitzvah we find in this sedra. This story appeared in the New Yorker magazine in 2016. David Knott is a surgeon who has worked in war zones all around the world. A few weeks after he left Aleppo, he was invited to lunch at Buckingham Palace. While duck and vintage port were served, the queen sat on his right. And when she turned to him, he explained that he had just returned from Syria. How was it? She asked. I tried to play it light, he said. I said it was absolutely dreadful. The queen pressed for details, but he couldn't bring himself to tell her. And his face started to show some emotion. At that point, she called over the corgis. And for the next 20 minutes, David Knott and the Queen petted the corgis and fed them biscuits under the table. As the lunch came to a close, she remarked, that's much better than talking, isn't it? We celebrate her life and her devotion and mourn the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. We wish comfort and long life to King Charles and the royal family. And we say, long live the king. Modani kol boker Thank you. 
That was your, uh, your nanny. Is that right? Have I got the name right? Um, with, <laughs> um, with a wonderful song, Maud, uh, Ani, um, which is more in celebration of the Queen's life. And um, as I said, um, we've linked our theme with Kitetse and uh, the bit of it which says, never be in too much of a rush to come to the aid of somebody who needs help. And for some more inspiration on those thoughts, we have uh, right, Michael Rainsbury talking a little later in this evening's programme. But for now, uh, we continue with a message from the Chief Rabbi. I would like to extend my warm congratulations to Ed Horridge and everyone responsible for the staging of One Shabbat 2022. And I extend to you all my very best personal wishes for a wonderful Shabbat. I'd also like to congratulate you on this year's theme, Social Capital and Good Neighbours. This theme reflects the finest of Jewish values and it reflects the wonderful amount of chesed, of altruistic, kind-hearted activity which exists within our communities. This was so evident during the challenging pandemic. And now that we are starting to move out of the pandemic, it is just so wonderful for us to be able to be fully active within our communities once again. Within this context, I give you my very best wishes and blessings that you will have a fantastic special Shabbat and indeed, let's make every Shabbat very special within our communities. God bless you all and very best wishes for one Shabbat 2022. The Chief Rabbi there. And now we move to Ein Kelohenu, um, a traditional song, but one which perhaps you've not heard this version because we're going to hear it in Ladino, sung in Montreal, by uh, uh, Reverend Hazan Daniel Ben Lolo and uh, some of his community members. In Kalahainu, uh, each sentence counts as a mitzvah, as a blessing. We are commanded to make at least 100 blessings a day. Um, but on Shabbat and festivals, the Amida, where we find so many blessings, uh, contains only seven. And Ein Kalahainu helps get to the 100 on those days when the Amida is shorter. And now, Reverend Ben Nolo with his community members. <laughs> Oh, I 
viene como nuestro rey, viene como nuestro salvador. No de él no no, no de él no no. Lo haremos a nuestro Señor, lo haremos a nuestro Rey, lo haremos a nuestro Salvador. Va. Shalom, dear friends. This is Reverend Chazan Daniel Ben Lolo from the Spanish and Portuguese Synagogue in Montreal. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you all, my dear friends from around the world, a Shabbat Shalom, a peaceful, relaxing, and very meaningful Shabbat. Kol Tov. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we are recording it, so you'll be able to play it back at some point. And uh, I hope you'll try and sing along. The interesting thing about the Ladino version is that alternate lines are in the original Hebrew and then the Ladino and Hebrew and Ladino back again. And uh, a very beautiful sound and, and somewhat different to what you might be singing or what have been used to singing in synagogue. Next, we hear another different voice and i want you to welcome cantor tamara wilson to sing shalom aleichem shalom
Shalom Aleichem, the song that we sing as we come to the Shabbos table to take part in Shabbos, in Kiddush, in the meal, in family, and in the start of Shabbat itself. Now we're going to have several contributions, and uh, I know that many of you uh, from all over the country just loved uh, Rabbi Danny Bergson last year. Uh, he can't be with us in person because he's short is having a special Shabbos and he couldn't run between the two in time. So he's uh, recorded, made two special recordings and a message for us. But we've also got, as I said, Michael Rainsbury. And um, we also have a special message from Malcolm Wiseman, who is so loved by many of you around the country when he has come to visit over the decades that he's been traveling around. I met him um, two or three weeks ago now down in London at his home and to record that message. Um, so let's hear from Danny Bergson, Michael Rainsbury. And please, if you've got the music, do sing along at home. I can see you all on the little icons, by the way. Um, <laughs> so I can see whether you're singing and uh, please do and share in Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom to all those who are celebrating the one Shabbat together um, on this Jewish Small Communities Network uh, Zoom uh, channel. And uh, I'd like to thank all those involved who've made this happen. A special thank you to, of course, Ed Horowitz, without which none of this could have happened. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity of wishing you all a happy and sweet and blessed New Year. And may this one Shabbat be a merit for us in the coming year that we dig on this Shabbat before Rosh Hashanah. We dig deep into our infinite reservoir of hope, our infinite reservoir of spirituality, of an, our ability, of our belief in ourselves that we can grow, that we can change, that we can connect and, and live more deeper and fulfilled lives. And may the coming year be filled with blessings both materially and spiritually. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Shabbat <laughs> Shabbat Nikah Bila, Hitor Rari, 
torri kiva orekh kumi ori uri ori shida bevi ke boda donaya yifnika lekhadoni lekhadoni rikat kala penishabanika bela lekhadoni rikat kala Shabbat Nikah Many years ago, a man went into a shul. He was alone. He was saying Kaddish. And there, a family invited him for a Shabbat meal, seeing that he was alone. One meal led to another, led to another, and he eventually became almost part of the family. The man was my father, and through the chesed, through the kindness of that family, he became part of the family, part of the community. Eventually, many years later, met my mother from the same city, and I and my, my family exist as a result. So I think it's fair to say that I see, I understand the importance of small Jewish communities and the acts of kindness that are done each day that have huge ramifications. I myself grew up in a relatively small Jewish community in London and I think if it wasn't for the attitude that small, we all know that in, everyone in small communities has, which is If there's no one, strive to be that person. I don't think I'd be here today. I'm speaking to you in my capacity as Head of Adult Education at the London School of Jewish Studies and it's this drive that, that really spurs me on every day. This idea that we should always look out for one another and we should always look to see what can be done and not wait for other people to do it. And that's why I'm really honoured to be speaking to you today, the beginning of this very special Shabbaton. The theme of this Shabbat is from a Pasuk, from a verse in Parashat Ki Tetzay, the weekly Torah portion we're reading, this uh, on Shabbat. Lo et chamo achicha o shoro noflim baderech. You shouldn't see the donkey of your brother or his ox fallen by the wayside, vihitalam tamayem, and you should and hide from them. Hakem takimimo. Help him get up. Don't, lo tireh, don't see vihitalam tamayem and hide. If you see, you can't hide. Do something about it. Where does this come from? This is a law. And of course, this is trying to teach us more than just that law. Um, but where does the DNA of seeing and not hiding come from? So I want to suggest that one of the sources is Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher. There aren't many stories that the Torah teaches us about Moses before he becomes, if you like, chosen as the savior of the Jewish people. One of them is that he sees an Egyptian striking a Jew in Egypt. And it says, the Torah says, Vayifen kovacho. He, see, he turns this way and that way, Vayar kienish, and he sees that there is no man. And he strikes the Egyptian and he hides them in the sand. Very simple. He only was going to strike the Egyptian, it seems, because there was no one else. If there was someone else, maybe he wouldn't have done it. That seems to be a very straightforward uh, understanding. However, the Torah continues. He went out on the second day. There are two Jewish men fighting. He said to the wicked person, clearly the aggressor, Why are you hitting your fellow? He said, Who pointed you as a judge uh, over us? Are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian? Moshe was scared, fearful, and said, Indeed, the matter is known. It seems that people did know about what happened the day before, very, very clearly. So, how do we understand the previous verse? Perhaps there is a different understanding of the word ish. Moshe turned this way and that way, and he saw Kiain ish. Not that there was physically no man, there was no ish, there was no one who was going to do anything about it. People were looking and seeing an injustice take place, and they were hiding. Just like we said, if there's no person doing anything about it, be that person. Moshe realized he had to be that person. Maybe he didn't realize that there were people hiding. That's why he didn't know that they, they were there, but they were there. And 
I think that this is significant um, in one more sense, because this strain of, uh, if you like, Moshe, Moshe's DNA comes to the fore again, just a little bit later, where he wanders in the desert and he sees a burning bush. And actually it says that, it doesn't just say that Moshe saw the burning bush, it says, Moshe says, Asura na ve'ere, I will turn and see. And God says that, notes that Moshe turned and saw, meaning other people may have seen the burning bush, but Moshe turned around, he thought about it, he saw, he didn't hide. That extra level of seeing that the Torah de de that describes is very similar to Moshe's seeing the injustice takes place. There is a line between seeing things that we can do something about with our fellow friends and neighbours, and then the seeing that is required of us to acquire the Torah. God decided to choose Moshe because he saw injustice in others and he did something about it. And that's why he was able to receive the Torah on our behalf. Maybe that's our challenge. Our challenge is to look after one another in communities, look out to see what can be done and to make that a direct line to also challenging us to grow Jewishly and to in increase our knowledge and understanding and care for the Torah and our Jewish heritage. I want to finish by wishing you Shabbat Shalom and also inviting you to in an event coming soon for the London Jew School of Jewish Studies, LSJS, a big Elul Day taking place on Sunday the 18th of September. It's going to include speakers such as Daniel Taub, the former ambassador, to Israeli ambassador to the UK, Rabbi Dr. Rahal Zaram from LSJS, Rabbi Joseph Dweck and others. It's all online. It's, uh, it's on the LSJS website, lsjs.ac.uk. Please come. It's accessible for everyone around the UK. We'd love to continue the excitement of your Shabbaton. Come and learn with us. And um, looking forward to a great year of looking out for one another. Shabbat Shalom. I'd just like to conclude with Shlomo Kobach's B'Shom Rubenei Yisrael as Shabbos, which comes from the Torah. Shabbat is a sign between the Jewish people and Hashem. Beni Ubein Bnei Yisrael. Otil Olam. It is an everlasting sign that Hashem created the world. Shabbat underpins our entire existence. We should live our lives permeated with the awareness of the divine. That we should act, think, feel, speak.
I met Malcolm Wiseman in his home. In my capacity as Chief Rabbi's visiting minister to small communities, I offer you my greetings for the forthcoming new year. I'm sorry that you have not seen very much of me in the past few months for personal family reasons and also because of COVID. But I'm always available at the end of a telephone line and I'm interested in all of you, wherever you are, whether you're living in a small community in the back end of Scotland or Northern Ireland or out in the Cayman Islands or out in the back of New Zealand because then I have an interest in all these areas. And um, from time to time, I get shipped out to visit these places on behalf of the chief rabbis. So I do value these connections. And uh, I appreciate the, the fact that um, you're still flourishing, hopefully. And if I can help in any way, please do contact me. And as I was saying, um, I met Malcolm Wiseman uh, two or three weeks ago when I was down in London and uh, we had quite an extensive chat um, and he was reminiscing about all the places that he has been over the years and it was lovely to speak to him again. Um, if I can see all the messages um, that are coming in the chat tonight and it's so lovely you are sharing um, on the chat. If you do want to share sort of on Zoom but it more in person, we do have uh, a coffee morning, a uh, coffee break every Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock and uh, come in. We have people from all over the country who come in, dip in. Sometimes we have special guests. We have a chat about something, about nothing. Um, but if you've got that time during a Tuesday morning, um, please join us. The uh, link to sign up is on the JSCN website. Just look for Coffee Break. Well, of course, an important part of Shabbos, starting Shabbos, is, is Giddish. But um, it's we haven't done candle lighting yet, so we can't actually say uh, do the Kiddush, um, as it were, but um, there were requests last year to hear Kiddush, and so I'm going to sing for you the Kiddush that I sing at our family table uh, every week, and uh, here we go. Um, this is my Kiddush cup, a very beautiful Kiddush cup inscribed by my wife for me, which is absolutely lovely, and um, after that we are going to have your messages that you've sent in, well, a few, a selection of the messages that you've shared before Shabbos with me, and we've put them together in a compilation. After that, um, we will have time to uh, unmute and uh, um, you can uh, say your own good uh, Shabbos and Shana Tova, and I hope you're going to join us tomorrow night for Havdalah, slightly shorter than tonight, but a beautiful one nevertheless with Elkan Levy and um, some other guests as well. So for this evening, uh, this is, as I said, um, my Kiddush um, at the family table. Yom hashishi v'akulu hashemayim v'ha aretz v'kol sava'am v'yakol Elohim v'yom hashvi malako asher asa v'yishpot v'yom hashvi v'yko malako asher asa v'yivarech Elohim et yom Ashvi ve kodesh oto ki vo shvad mi kol malato ashevara elohim lasot savri maranan baruchata adonai bore puri hagafen baruchata adonai eloheinu melata olam. Asher Kiddishanu Mr. Tavra Sabanu Shabbat Kadashab Avavra Song Hilanu Zikaron the Master Bereshi Ki Hu Yom Tehil Me Great Kadesh Zahel Itziad Mizraim Kivanu Verhata Uvatanu Kidashta Miko Huamim Vishabakashab Avavra Song Hilal Tanu 
Baruch Ata Adonai Mukalej HaShabbat. And now your messages from around the country and some of the people who've helped make this one Shabbat possible. Eshet chayil mi imza, erachok mi ipnini memicha, batach balevala, mishala lo yersa. Malatu tov deloma, kol yemech hayeh, darshas emir. My name is Andrea Silverman. I work for Paperweight, the Jewish Community's Advice Center, and my role is National Services Coordinator. I wanted to wish everyone in all the small communities a wonderful One Shabbat with the JSCN, which does amazing, brilliant work with you all. Good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> This is one Shabbat, and because of that, from all of us here at CST, may I wish a Shabbat Shalom, especially safe, peaceful, enjoyable Shabbat. To everybody in our smaller, more cozy communities all across the country. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I wish you all um, Shabbat Shalom and Shana Tova for the new year. Thank you. Well, just some of the very many people who have been joining in one Shabbat. And of course, it's not just you guys who are here this evening and with with us on Kabbalat Shabbat, but communities who are sharing one Shabbat with a community kiddush, with a sermon, with some learning, with some activities in their own communities on Shabbat or during the week. And there's many of them around the country. Just a few of them mentioned there, really just a few of them. Well, now we've come to the end of our Kabbalat Shabbat today. Please remember that is Havdalah's uh, the doors open at nine o'clock and we start at 9.15 tomorrow night with a special guest, um, well, several special guests, but from Israel we have Elkan Levy, who I'm sure you'll love to see again as uh, he was with us last year. It's uh, Shabbat Shalom and Shana Tova, if you're not joining us tomorrow from me. Um, but now I'm going to invite you to all put yourselves on gallery view 
and uh, to um, uh, open up, unmute yourselves and wish one another Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. 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 Uh, and thank you for a lovely service. Ed. Thank you for coming. Lovely. Thank you, Ed. Lovely. Yeah. Good Shabbos, Gittel. Good Look Shabbos. after yourself. Look after yourself. Bye. Yeah, bye. 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 Good bye. Shabbos, bye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Great job, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Brilliant. As ever, Jackie. Oh, oh, <laughs> David. <laughs> Jack. Oh. Great job, Ed. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Oh, thanks, Shabbat Cindy. shalom. <laughs>